Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Lesson 4.8, which is all about translation images of trigonometric functions. Now, we've already talked about translations in the past, and you're going to see that those same rules that we learned about in the previous chapter will apply to trigonometric functions as well. But let's first review what a translation is. So here we have the translation of, or we have a coordinate x, y being translated to the point x plus 2 and y. And if you notice, the y stays the same here. So this is not moving up or down. This is either going to move to the left or to the right. Now remember, a rule tells you exactly what's happening. So the fact that this says that it's x plus 2 means that it's moving to the right 2 units. Or we could say it's a shift to the right 2 units. Now it says the translation maps the equation y equals x squared to what new equation? So remember when we're going from an an, a rule to an equation, we take and replace x with the opposite of what happens to x in the rule, um, and the same thing with y. Now the y is going to stay the same, so we don't have to worry about that. But we're going to replace x with the opposite, whoops, which would be x minus 2 quantity squared. It's not x squared minus 2, it's the quantity x minus 2 being squared. Now again, this applies to translations. Now when we're working with a translation, we have something called a phase shift. A phase shift is referring to a horizontal translation. So that's an important term to know. You'll see this a lot where they'll ask you for the phase shift. You need to know which direction a phase shift is referring to. A phase shift is a horizontal translation. So when I look at this equation, if they, if they ask us to find the rule for the translation, here's how we'd write it. Maybe the translating the point x, y. Remember, when we're writing a rule, we take the opposite of what happens in the equation to the x. So the opposite of adding, plus, adding 60 would be subtracting 60. And the y is staying the same here. Why don't you guys try this next one on your own? So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer, but it should only take you a second. Okay, so you should have gotten... Uh, this, as your answer, it's a translation of the point x plus 38, technically 38 degrees, and the y stays the same. Now let's talk about the graph of the cosine function, because we know the graph of the cosine function and the sine function are very similar to each other, because here's what the sine function would look like, at least some of its key points here for the first period. It would look something like this. But well, we want to figure out what translation would map the cosine function onto the sine function. Well, if you notice, if I just took this maximum value and moved it to the right, pi over 2 radians, and I moved all the points to the right, pi over 2 radians, it would lay on top of that graph for the sine function. So we're going to say this is a translation of x plus pi over 2. And the y stays the same. Now the equation that would do this is going to be the equation y equals replace x with the opposite of x plus pi over 2. So it would be x minus pi over 2. So that's the same as y equals the sine of x. So these two equations result in the same graph. y equals cosine of x minus pi over 2 is the same as y equals the sine of x. Which brings us to our next theorem which is called the phase shift identity. And that's simply that if we have um, the cosine of x minus pi over 2, that's the same as sine of x. That's what we just talked about. But if we, have, if we have the sine function, we're trying to map it onto the cosine function, I can move it to the left, pi over 2 units. And so that would be, the equation for that would be x plus pi over 2 would give us the cosine function. So that's dealing with phase shifts. Now let's talk about vertical shifts. That's this next section. So if you don't have my notes, you're going to want to copy down this graph. Because we're going to start with the graphing the equation for the cosine function after this translation, where the x stays the same, but this time the y is going to change. The y is going to be um, moved down two units. So before we come up with an equation, let's talk about the graph. Now if you think about the sine and cosine function, they always go um, up and down around that line 
around the x-axis. Now, if it's going to be moved, we call that x-axis, we call that equal the equilibrium. So it's going up and down um, all around the equilibrium, which for the basic sine and cosine function is the x-axis. Well, if we're going to move this graph down two units, that equilibrium line also moves down two units. Now, we're not going to use a solid line to represent that equilibrium line because it's not actually part of the graph. We're just going to use that as a reference tool to help us come up with where the graph would be. So we start out with that. Now this is a cosine function that we're graphing. Now remember, originally the cosine function would have started here at the coordinate 0, 1. Well, we are going to shift this down two units. So now it's going to start at um, 0, negative 1. And then we would come down over here. This would be your first, what would have originally been a 0, is now at the point pi over 2, negative 2. And then originally your first Minimum value was at pi, but it was at pi negative 1. Well, now that's moved down two units as well to be at pi negative 3. And then it would come back up again. And so if I go backwards, these would be the points we would graph. Now, again, when we're going to graph this on your own, you want to do exactly what I'm doing here. Don't just sketch a line and think that that's going to be enough. I have to see where each of these significant points would be. So now we can connect these. Oops. And there you go. That's what this graph would look like if you shifted the cosine function down two units. Well, let's write an equation now for the, if we move this down two units. Well, the equation, if I replaced y with y minus, the opposite of y minus 2, that'd be y plus 2 equals the cosine of x. But I don't want to leave it like this. Instead, I want to get the y by itself. So this would be the way we want to write your answer. Now, notice what I just did there. I put the x inside of parentheses. Now that's not required, but it's suggested, suggested because then it's very clear that the only thing we're taking the cosine of is just the x. And after taking the cosine of whatever our x value is, then we subtract 2. So again, it's not required to put parentheses around the x, but it makes it a little clearer for the reader to know exactly what's going on there. So when it says find the amplitude and period of the function g, well, if you notice, the amplitude is still going to be one unit. Even though it's been shifted down two units, the amplitude is still one. And the period still goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the period is still 2 pi. So those don't change, because all we're doing is we're moving the location. We're not stretching or shrinking it. So those are not going to change for any of these that are dealing with just translations. Now this one here is a combination of everything we've talked about so far in this lesson. This here is going to be our phase shift. And this piece here is going to be our vertical shift. So now we just need to write the equation. So we're going to replace, we're working with the sine function here. So we're going to replace x with the opposite of what's happening to the x. So minus pi over 4. Now the plus 7, if I put minus 7 over with the y, I'd end up getting the y by itself by adding 7 to both sides anyhow. So I'm just going to put that plus 7 on the other side of the parentheses there. So that would be your answer. So if this function, if you were to graph it, would be moving the graph to the right, pi over 4 radians, and moving it up 7 units. And again, the amplitude and period would stay the same. It would still be 1 and 2 pi. So just like we just looked at, sometimes that there, there are situations where not only is it moving it, do we have a phase shift to the left or to the right, but sometimes we also combine with that a vertical shift. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to combine these phase and vertical shifts to come up with some equations here. So with this first one, we can see that this is for the um, cosine function. And for the cosine function, again, it originally starts out here at the point 0, 1. Well, we can see that it's moved to the left, pi over 4 units, and it's moved down 1 unit. So we're going to describe that with a rule. So again, it's gone to the left, pi over 4 units. So when we write the rule, we write exactly what's happening. And it's moving down 1 unit, so it'll be y minus 1. 
This is not the equation. It says to write an equation here. This is not your equation. So we want to make sure that we change this now into our equation. So again, this is for the cosine function. It's going to be the cosine of x plus pi over 4. And then we tack on the minus 1 for the y minus 1. So that would be your answer. Now this last one is a trickier one. So let's look at this one together. So it says find an equation for the translation image of the graph of the sine function shown below. Well, here's what we have. So I have the sine function on here so we can see what's happened with these two points. So this is originally the point pi over 2. So it's gone from being at pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3, we need, to we need to figure out, well, how much of a change is that? So we're going to take the larger value, the 2 pi over 3, minus the smaller value, which is pi over 2, and subtract these to figure out how big of a difference this is. Now, they don't have the same denominator, so we can't just uh, subtract these. We have to change these to have common denominators. So I could see if I was working with a denominator of 6, that would work out nicely. So for the first ratio, the first fraction, if I multiply the top and bottom by 2, I end up with a denominator of 6. So this is the same as 4 pi over 6. For the second equation, if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, I end up with a denominator of 6. So this will be 3 pi over 6 is the same as pi over 2. So now I can clearly see that pi, 4 pi over 6 minus 3 pi over 6 is 1 pi, or just pi, over 6. So that's what it's moved here. This is moved pi over 6 units to the right. So our translation, we would say it's oops, x plus pi over 6, because it's moved to the right pi over 6 units. And we can also see now that it's moved up. Our maximum value is moved up from 1 all the way up to 4. So it's shifted up. 3 units. Again, this is not our equation. This is just the rule for our translation. But having this rule makes it really easy to come up with our actual equation. So again, we're working with the sine function. So we replace x with the opposite here of what happens with the x. It will be x minus pi over 6. Oops. And then with the y, we just tack on the plus 3 outside of there. And that would be your answer. Well, there you have it. That's it. That's all we need to worry about with translations. So hopefully you can see that there is a strong relationship here that it's just like what we did in the previous chapter when working with translations. You just want to remember that when we're looking at a rule that's telling ex us exactly what's happening, when we need to change to an equation, we need to take the opposite of what happens to the x and the opposite of what happens to the y and replace those in with x and y in the original equation. So with that, now you should be able to do the assignment. So good luck.